Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. You have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is and adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers, unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. This is Brad Mills for the Salem Card Show in Salem, Indiana, inviting you out to our next show on May the 6th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Washington County Fairgrounds in Salem, Indiana. We will have over 50 tables of sports cards, non-sports cards, including Pokemon, sports memorabilia, sports card collecting supplies, modern and vintage cards. This is a great place to buy, sell, or trade your cards. Admission is free. Families are always welcome. Please follow us on all social media at Salem Card Show.
When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. Affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control, and priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping, because when you talk, they hear you. Lynx Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today. 812-883-4154. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for youth. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs and dangerous things like metals into your body. And nicotine, which can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping. Because when you talk, they hear you. Welcome everyone to West Washington Livestream here at Jack Butcher Arena for Regional 31 action between the North Dubois Jeeps and the Lagodi Lions. This is Craig Akers and I'm joined by Brad Mills for today's action. Great matchup today of um, sectional winners here for a chance at a semi-state. A little bit of a different format this year for the boys and the girls both. The boys um, will follow the girls lead and they will play two 
separate regional games that will both both winners will be crowned regional champs and then they will redraw for um, the semi-state. So it's a kind of a, a unique situation here, but always glad to be at a basketball court in March in Indiana. You know, you can't ask for anything more. Brad, what are your thoughts? I think we've got a great rematch, you could call it, of two blue chip conference teams here. Ligoti, of course, winning the blue chip conference this year. Um, perfect uh, eight no, I believe in that. And uh, Dubois, Northeast Dubois, there five and three was actually fourth. Um, there we got a team with uh, one of the hardest schedules in Ligoti in single A. We got Northeast Dubois, who, in my humble opinion, didn't have a bad loss all year. Yeah, I would agree with you. You know, they've they've played some some pretty stiff competition in that blue chip conference. Um, you know, they've they've played Ligoti in um, you know the regular season. So this is a, a rematch of a game that has already been played where Ligoti came out on top. Um, you know, so it's a it's a good matchup just overall for this regional here. Um, Brad, coming in, you know, you've got you've got Bledsoe, Peyton Bledsoe on the Ligoti side, who is kind of the the do it all. Um, for them, they went a couple of games in the middle of the season without him, um, and and kind of struggled. Found found their legs um, towards the end of that stretch, but as as Ligoti goes, it, it's you know Peyton Bledsoe. He's going to lead the way for them. If you think about it, Craig, in the history that is of Ligoti High School with Coach Butcher there and uh, their numerous wins as a uh, school, Peyton Bledsoe is the all-time leading scorer. That says something, Craig. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, he's he's the all-time leading scorer here at Lagodi, and and you know at six four is what they've got him listed at. You know, he can he can stretch the floor, he can shoot threes, he can he rebounds, he he kind of does it all. And the rest of the team has really complimented him. You brought that up when I was talking to Coach Off here. We'll hear that uh, interview here in a bit. But he brought up just how many kids have stepped up in so many different areas this year for the Lions. They are a they are a tough team. They survived a team that beat them in, I believe, triple overtime there in Orleans uh, to win their sectional championship. And Northeast Dubois on the other side um, beats an Evansville Christian team that they weren't supposed to beat if you looked at it on paper. But that's the great thing about March and the great thing about Indiana high school basketball. You got to win to get in. Yeah, you're exactly right, and that's that's what's happened. You know, the the Northeast Dubois probably weren't the favorite in their sectional, um, along with Ligoti. Ligoti knocked off Orleans um, to get out of their sectional. So these two teams probably weren't on paper supposed to be here, but both of them are very happy to be here, um, you know, at Jack Butcher Arena to, to play some basketball today. So as you mentioned, Brad, you got a chance to interview Ligoti's head coach. So why don't we jump over to um, to that interview? and we will be back for uh, the National Anthem and starting lineups. Washington live stream. I'm here with Ligoti coach Ryan Haywood. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about your team's a sectional championship you guys just won? Yeah, um, you know, it was a sectional 63. We feel like it's always a, a pretty tough sectional to win, and, um, you know, we, we had a draw where we played three games, Vincent Gervais very first, and then, uh, the rival Bar Reeve and what was a, you know, a, a packed house, you know, 4,000 plus here in a pretty hostile environment. So it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, we, it was a tight game for most of the way. And then about midway through the third quarter, we were able to spread it out, ended up winning by 18. And then uh, we played Orleans, number two team in the state. They had beat us at quadruple overtime at, at their place earlier in the year. And I, I just thought our kids, we, we've gotten a lot tougher, you know, and that's the thing we've been challenging them on. Uh, physically, mentally tougher throughout the year. And, uh, you know, I thought defensively, and you know how it is in the sectional, I mean, they let the kids play, and, and it was a physical game. And uh, we held them to two points in the um, um, first quarter, and then we held them scoreless in the entire third quarter. So, uh, you know, our defense was, was pretty good, and we were able to score enough to beat them by seven. And, Coach, you um, come home getting to host a, a regional here, a one-game regional, a little different this year. Um, is there a, is there an advantage or disadvantage to, you know, playing at home during tournament time? Well, I don't think there's a disadvantage. Um, you know, I'm obviously familiar with the surroundings. And we just kind of feel like the, the environment here is a little different, you know, than what it might be other places. Uh, it, it, it's just it's, it's just a neat environment it's a loud environment 
Um, but we just don't feel like it's like a lot of other places. So for teams to come in here and play with, you know, 4,500 people, you know, and, and, and loud and all that good stuff, you know, it, it might take them a little bit to get used to. And, you know, we've kind of been there, done that. So hopefully it's an, an advantage for us. And I do, uh, if you're watching this broadcast and you've never gotten a chance to go to Ligoti's gym, uh, it is definitely a place steeped in history, but it's a one of a kind. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, the amazing part of uh, technology is that I'm actually not going to be at the game physically. I'm going to be um, remotely broadcasting while my partner is going to be there. So I kind of miss out on being there in person. But tell you what, if you can ever get there, check it out. It's a great place. Coach, uh, we got the Northeast Dubois Jeeps, uh, a team you're familiar with. Uh, what do you expect out of them here on this uh, regional championship game? Well, I mean, they got the nothing to lose kind of attitude, I'm sure. Uh, you know, they were – to some people, a surprise winner of their sectional. I think a lot of people, not us, but a lot of people had kind of penciled in Evansville Christian to win that, and, and they knocked them off. Evansville Christian is the team that beat us twice early in the year. So um, like we told our kids on, on Tuesday when we got back you know, at practice that, that the regular season game at their place means nothing. Uh, they start five seniors. They're strong. They're physical. They're athletic. And, uh, you know, they check a lot of the boxes that you want to check to uh, be able to have postseason success. So um, we'll have our hands full with them. And, uh, but at the same time, I want our guys to be confident. I love the way we're playing, especially the, the last couple months here. So, you know, if we continue to do just what we've been doing the last few months, I think we'll, we'll have a chance. Kind of playing off of your quote there, Coach, uh, is there anybody on your team that's really stepped up for you over these last few months or even like these uh, last few games to really uh, help you guys shine? No, absolutely. I think everybody knows Peyton Bledsoe. Um, you know, he, he averages around 20 a game. He's, he's a multiple time all state player. Um, but our problem early in the year was we just didn't have enough around him and we were deferring to him too much. Um, and I think he went down with a high ankle sprain and missed five games in the middle of the year. And I thought that's where we kind of took off is once he got back, those guys had to kind of expand their roles. Um, you know, that just kind of carried over. To, so to answer your question, uh, Isaac Eagle has been phenomenal for us. Um, he was probably the MVP of the sectional, um, a senior guard for us, slasher, shooter. Uh, but, but he's a kid that, that the last month and a half or so has really, really, really stepped up his game. Uh, Leighton Jeffers is our point guard. He's been solid all year. Parker Irvin, our big man, he also had a high ankle sprain. So we were without him for a long time. So he's kind of, you know, back into – the full health now and, and he was an honorable mention all state kid last year and then drew walker a, a junior that's starting for us for the first time this year doesn't score a ton but he just stuffs the stat sheet i mean it might be six points eight rebounds seven assists i mean he's had multiple types of games like that coach uh we talk about tournament time it takes a little bit of talent you know a lot of luck and uh you know sometimes it's just you have all that preparation that comes into it uh for you guys you know you were able to uh end yours um your your uh sectional week on saturday unlike a lot of these other teams um how does that go into this week in your planning is there anything different that's changed from sectional to regional week getting ready for it no um we do what we typically do um we gave, anytime we can give them two days off in a row, we, we try to take advantage of that. So we gave them off Sunday, obviously, and Monday. Um, so we didn't have them back in until Tuesday. What we've learned is anytime we give them a couple of days off in a row, which we need to do for their legs and for their mind a little bit, it's going to be ugly for the first day back. You know, So Tuesday we got them up and down the floor a whole lot. Um, we worked on us Wednesday. Uh, today we'll continue working on us and then really dive into, uh, to do boys, um, Friday and Saturday morning. But, you know, our philosophy all year has kind of been, let's take care of us. You know, in past years, I feel like maybe we've spent too much time preparing for other teams. Um, let's, let's make sure that we're doing a good job with the stuff that, that we do. And that's something, Coach, I think a lot of teams don't think about. you got to worry about yourself and what got you there. Coach, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we can't wait for this uh, great regional game here at Lagodi. Um, thank you so much for joining us here on West Washington Livestream. Okay, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors.
We're back here at Jack Butcher Arena where the home Lagodi Lions will be the visitors today for your matchup with the Northeast Dubois Jeeps. Brad, final thoughts? we got 40 seconds before the tip here. I tell you what, it's going to be a, a definitely a barn burner. I can guarantee you that the North, Northeast Dubois Jeeps are going to be coming out uh, excited for this game. They've already thought everybody's ridden them off. Uh, Lagodi um, doesn't think this is going to be a cakewalk, as you heard from Coach there. I think they're going to wind up having a great game here. Um, now it's going to come down to, I think, the Lagodi crowd giving the uh, little, little bit of an advantage to the Lions today. So we're 20 seconds away from the tip. Like I said, we're going to um, come back with your starting lineups and um, right after the national anthem. So we're going to step aside, have that break, and we will be back for those starting lineups after this break. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em. Remind me about that party again. And Alex adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. Back to action here at Jack Butcher Arena. Great job by the um, singer for tonight's uh, national, well, actually today's national anthem, four o'clock <laughs> game, so a little different than, than what we're used to with a, a midday game here at four. So, you know, great job by her. I believe it was Lindsay England was the singer, so great job there. Getting ready for our... Craig, are there very many seats open there? Uh, there are a few, but not many. It is it is a uh, packed a packed house. Um, so definitely a, 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 a nice atmosphere for a regional game. Um, of course, Lagodi hosting has, you know, most of their town here, I would assume. So, you know, if, you, if you're watching out there, um, you know, it's it's a packed house. You can see it in the on the camera for the uh, for the the uh, home team Lagodi Lions, um, along with the the Jeeps. They brought quite a few people. Hard to tell where the Jeep division is with the New Washington division because they're side by side and both in blue. So a little hard to to see. But um, you know, this is a, a pretty packed place at the moment. And I tell you what, we brought up a lot of those names, Coach. Uh, did there for the Lions there, I tell you. Uh, somebody I, I would, after looking at some stats there, I think a big guy today, Parker Arvin, the big man, uh, as long as he's healthy and can do that, uh, I think he's going to create a little bit of a mismatch height-wise uh, for the Jeeps. So we'll see how, uh, if I was uh, if I was Ligoti's uh, athletic director, I think I'd be looking for a new shoe contract with somebody <laughs> with all those high ankle springs.
So the Jeeps do start um, five seniors for them. They start number zero, Colby Lockard. Um, number five, Gage Sheepers. Number 21, Ty Kalb. Number 22, Peyton Blitz. And number 23, Noah Blitz. So 12, all of them are seniors who start for the Jeeps. And you see that in their schedule and how they did this year, Craig. Um, you know, the longest losing streak they had was three games, and that was the South Knox at Southridge and then against Paoli, you know, three um, decent teams there. And I've, I noticed they had losses to Jasper and Bar Reeve. Um, and actually what's really Evansville Christian, which they beat in the championship game, they flipped the script on them because they got beat by 10 to start the season with them and then tucked them out uh, by two in overtime there to uh, take home that sectional championship. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. You know, they did flip the script on them there and were able to come out of there with the championship. So that's always a, uh, a nice, you know, a nice win for them. Getting ready for the jump ball here. Ball goes up and Lagodi controls it. Going to be brought up. It'll by, be interesting to see the pace of play today. Yeah, be brought up by Leighton Jeffers. Swings it over to Peyton Bledsoe for the three. No good. Going to be a Lagodi rebound, though. Wade Walden coming through with that one. Lagodi setting up in their uh, offense here. Of course, like we said in the pregame, a lot of that offense goes through Peyton Bledsoe, the all-time leading scorer here. There's a first three for Leighton Jeffers. So they miss the first one, then get the rebound and are able to put it back in. So first uh, points on the board for Lagodi. Coming back across the Jeeps with their five seniors. Swing it around the top. Lagodi in a 2-3 zone here. First three, no good. And rebounded by uh, the Lions coming back the other way. Going to get a foul. We got our ball. first whistle. Yeah. On the Lions there. Yeah, going to be a moving screen on the Lions. And we'll see as these teams start to fill each other out here to start this game about how they want to set up. You'll see the... Okay, there was some confusion. It looks like Lagodi yeah. will re re Okay. Yeah, Peyton, Peyton Blutz is going to pick that one up. Sorry, Betts. B-E-T-Z, okay. Betts. Not Blutz, oh, Betts. There we go. We got yeah. to go. <laughs> Lots of Bs on this floor. <laughs> Quick shot. Good. That is Peyton Blutz, for three. Uh, Out six I watched to nothing the early do that many times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to light it up. Nice press Back break the by the Jeeps way. to three. Mm. I like the so way the Jeeps are moving the ball. They've just not been able to capitalize on anything. Right. Bledsoe down the lane, puts that one up, but it's no good, but going to draw a foul, go to the line for two. Going to be the first foul. And that's what you see with a – and that is what you see, Craig, with a senior-laden team there. They're going to be able to move the ball quick and make smart decisions, but they just got to be able to hit those shots. Right. Bletso with the first one knocks it down. Who do we have the foul on there? I spoke over you. I'm sorry. Um, number five, which is Betts, I believe. Able to knock down the second one also. So Bletso has five of the eight. Jeeps break the press there. Back out in their 2 3 zone. Jeep swing it all the way over the top, then feed the, the middle. Colby Lockard not able to get a shot up. Gets that one up. It's no good. Lions out with the he rebound. He had to fight to get that. We're going to get a foul on the floor there, coming back the other way. Going to be the second foul on Gage Shippers. 
In comes number 10, Grant Gallier. Grant, a 6-1 junior. Lagodi running through their offense. It goes to Bledsoe for three. That one no good, and the Jeep's able to rebound it. That's the first rebound for the Jeeps of the day. Trailing 8 nothing here. Swing it around the top. Drive into the lane, not able to get anywhere. Nice job by Isaac Eagle to cut that one off. We'll go to giving the Jeeps nothing here on the offensive end. Yeah, they've they've switched out of that 2-3 zone into a man, so Jeeps trying to get something, trying to get an open shot. Nice feed there. Going to be a block mm. on Bledsoe. And that would have been a big basket personal. there for the Jeeps. Yeah, definitely a, a big basket. They're yet to get on the board. Three minutes, ten seconds gone here in the first. Craig, I like that philosophy, though. They had a couple threes that were nowhere near being hit. They were patient and worked it inside, got a great look. I thought we had an and one there. Lockard steps up to the line, misses the first one. Second one up, hits that one. Now the Jeeps are on the scoreboard. Lagodi feeds to the corner, then back out top. Come back and set it up again. Didn't like that look. Nice, nice interior there. pass. Unable to get it off of, unable to get their hands on it, so it goes out of bounds. Going to be a turnover. I've got that as the first turnover for the Lions tonight. Chiefs do a great job of breaking that press there. Not a whole lot of trapping out of it yet. Just a little bit to speed them up, just a touch. Jeeps working it around the perimeter, seeing if they can find somebody cutting in the edges of those zone of that zone. It's a rebound by Lagodi after the Jeep miss. Hand off to Bledsoe. They go down to Parker Ar Arvin. Nice turn there, unable to get it up on the board. Then finally does, going to get a foul underneath. And I can uh, I can uh, definitely emphasize with, uh, with the uh, Jeeps bench there. They were wanting to uh, travel there. Somehow Parker is able to move around without getting a travel call, and he's going to be shooting two free throws here. Yeah, he pivoted two or three times there and then able to get it up on the backboard. First one up and good. Lions are three for three so far in this game from the line. Arvin ready to let his second one go. That one up and good. Once again, the line. And the Jeeps have done a good job breaking that press again. Yeah. It's just once they break it, there's not a whole lot that they've got shot-wise. There's a nice drive by Grant Gallier for his first two of the night. Lions work around the perimeter, back down to Arvin. Arvin up for two. That one good. Lions out with their 2-2-1 press here. Just a little little bit to speed them up. Nothing, nothing huge on that. Jeeps feed the middle. Don't like the shot there, so they go back to the perimeter to work it around. 12-3, 2.45 left to go here in the first quarter. Jeeps turn that one over. Bledsoe with the steal. Down to Arvin underneath. The feed across to, to Eagle. 
for his two, and it's going to be an and one opportunity. They're going to pick up a foul on zero. Lockard going to be his first foul. Team fouls are five to one. Northeast Dubois uh, in a little bit of foul trouble here early in the game. And it's also trouble because the other team's not missing free throws, Craig. Right. Number 21, Isaac Wagner comes in. That one through and good for Eagle. And we're going to get a timeout by Northeast Dubois. They're going to take a, a timeout just trying to gather themselves here. Going to be a full timeout. So we're going to step aside for a commercial break, and we'll be back in just a moment. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. You know, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and adults make listen. choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Back to live action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Lions do lead. Sorry, we had some, some backwards uh, scoreboard there. So Northeast There's Dubois the put back in there for the Jeeps. Lockard got that one up on the board. Oh, sorry, that wasn't Lockard. That was uh, number 10, Grant Gallier. Three point up and, that's and a four miss. points off the bench. Four points off the bench for the Jeeps there. He's been a, a nice little addition there. Right, 22 down the lane. Peyton Betts. Craig, that's what you want out of a timeout. You right, know, they've come, come out. You come get out. Two buckets back to back. Make it 15 to seven. We'll go to Lions out ahead. They swing out, go underneath the Bledsoe. Bledsoe up with his left hand and that one good. Gives him seven in the first quarter. Still in that 2-2-1 two -two uh, press. Jeep swinging around the perimeter. It's a three up and good from Noah Betts. Cuts the lead to and seven. And I tell you, a perfect execution there. Nobody really wanted to shoot that early for the Jeeps, and uh, Noah comes up and hits a great shot for him. Lions come back. They're going to run through their offense once again. They do a nice job of moving it around the perimeter and then finding Bledsoe or Arvin down low. Thirty-four seconds left to go in this first quarter. Lions have done a great job of just moving this ball around the whole time. <laughs> and then we get a kick, and it's out of bounds. So Lions going to get the ball underneath with 9.2. Yeah, the ball just skips out, and that's going to give them with 9.2 under their own basket here. Um, who do you think is going to get it, Craig? Uh, if I were betting Bledsoe, <laughs> my bet is this ball goes to him. I mean, he's got seven in the quarter, so. That three, no good. 
So that's going to be the end of our first quarter. Lagodi 17, the Northeast Dubois Jeeps 10. We're going to step aside for a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. Links Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. Back to live action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Lions of Lagodi do lead 17 to 10 over the Northeast Dubois Jeeps. Second quarter of action coming up here. Started out with all Lagodi. They were hitting everything, getting all the rebounds. Northeast Dubois comes back uh, after finding um, Grant Gallier underneath twice to get buckets. So. 7 to 2 run, Craig, to end that quarter for the Jeeps. That's how you want to close out quarters for sure. So Jeeps come back out, running through their offense around the perimeter. They make a nice cut. That one no good. Arvin comes out with that rebound. On the boards, 6-2. to two. Peyton Jeffers. Layton Jeffers. Layton Jeffers with that one. Gives him five. Jeeps come back out, working through their same offense. They haven't given up on it yet. They find the center of the floor, and it comes back for three. That one no good. Arvin with that rebound. Jeeps now one for eight from three-point land. Two-point miss on the other side for Lagodi. And 22, Peyton Betts for that one, his fourth point of the night. He slashes through the lines there and gets that quick bucket. Lagodi trying to work baseline. We're going to pick up a foul on number three. And that'll Maddie be the Schnell. team six, correct? Uh, yes, six to one. Next one will put the uh, lines in the bonus there. Bledsoe drives. Going to get a travel. Only their second turnover so far. Pretty clean game. I've got two turnovers apiece. Uh, but the real story is on the on the boards, the Lions leading seven to three. Jeeps find the center of the floor, but nowhere to go once they get it there. And then a turnover. I jinxed him. I said no turnovers, and then they <laughs> come back and turn it over. So Lagodi works to the high post and then comes back out because they were looking for Bledsoe down low, unable to get it to him. They swing far side. That's Isaac Eagle with it. He goes up, no good. And that foul is going to be on Arvin. I believe that's his first. Right. Just kind of ran into him while he was there for a rebound. 5.55 to go here in the first half of play. I've been really impressed, Craig, with the way that Lagodi has cut towards the basket and hit these shots right there in that in the key. They've not, you know, you think they would try to shoot outside. They have went in hard and hit a lot of tough shots. Right. This time down the floor, we see Lagodi in a man-to-man -man here. They had been in a 2-3 zone. That one up and good for Gage Schupers. His first bucket of the night. He comes back on the floor after having two fouls.
Nice move there, unable to get it, but gets his own rebound, goes up with that one, it's no good. No good coming back the other way. And nobody able to In the control, Jeep. control that rebound. You brought it up, out. Craig. You brought it up, Craig. The Jeeps are just struggling on the rebounds, trying to get up on the boards. And right there was a great opportunity for them to get one and get one put back and couldn't do it. Right, but they do a great job of uh, cutting into this lead that was an 8 to nothing lead. They've got it chopped down to 5 at the moment. Dollar tries to go down, unable to get there. Comes across for a three. That one halfway down, no good. Ligoti does a nice job boxing out, getting that rebound quickly the other way. Drives all the way. Eagle up, no good. Jeeps kick ahead quickly. Nice jump stop. That one up and no good. Bledsoe with that rebound. Quickly, Bledsoe up. That one good. What a great play. Great players make great plays. I always say it there. I had to just kind of sit back and watch that replay. <laughs> so that's going to be the second foul on Lockard. Bledsoe going to go through the line. Foul. Yep, 17 fouls. 7-2. Seven to two. Bledsoe knocks that one down. Gives him eight in the game. Number three, Schnell checks into the game. Craig, have the Lions missed a free throw yet? No, I have them um, six for six. <laughs> We're back to the 2 2 1 press here. Jeeps break it, get it to the center of the floor. Do a nice job of passing that one underneath and able to get the bucket is. I no bets. That's 20, yeah, 23. So that gives him five. Arvin That's Arvin. Gonna That's going to be his yep. second. Going to be his second personal. So, Jeeps have cut the lead to six, 16-22. Just over halfway to go here in the second quarter of play. Jeeps working the perimeter, getting some screens, then trying to find the center of the floor. Nice cut there. They throw it up, try to lob it over. Going to be a turnover for the Jeeps. They're fourth. And most of them, Craig, have been on their end, right there under right. the basket. Yeah, they've they've been unable to find their own players in you know short passes. So. Backdoor cut by Bledsoe in the lane. That one up, no good. Isaac, Isaac Wagner, Wagner with a big bucket. Out of nowhere there to make the bucket for the Lions. Yeah, nice slash there by Wagner to get that uh, catch and shot. Jeeps down eight, looking to find the center of the floor, which they do. One dribble back out to the perimeter. There's a three, no good. Bledsoe with the rebound. And He's the lines will slow it up a little bit here. They work through their offense, goes into Bledsoe. Bledsoe goes up with it. That one, no good. But going to get a foul. Going to be on 32. Oh, sorry, 23. Noah Betts. His Bledsoe first. doing a great job today of drawing fouls on this Jeep's defense. Well, he's a he's a mismatch at 6-4. Yeah. Yeah, the Jeeps had one guy at 
And then you look at Ligoti, they have, I thought it was two or three guys. The little Jeeps behind the goal trying to do whatever they can to make him miss his free throw. But he's yeah. not. Keeps bringing it across. They are still uh, able to kind of just uh, find – they're finding people. They just can't finish here. Right. They've spread this lead out to 10. Nice feed to the center. Kick back. Jeeps let it fly. That one no good. Lagodi has now doubled him up on the boards, uh, 12 to 6. Unable to get there, so comes back out. Bledsoe with the step back, knocks that one down. I've got him for four. It's a game of runs, and right now the uh, Lions are on one. Yeah, minute 45 to go here in the first half of play. We'll move it around the perimeter. Lions setting in a 2-3 zone. There comes the turnover and back the other way. Oh, turnover back. Misses the layup. Ty Cal just kicking himself for missing that, but you know, Craig, that's a that's a that's a hard play to kind of stop and make sure you hit it. That's the hard right. play. You got so much adrenaline going. So minute 18 to go here in the second. Going to be a timeout be timeout for Ligoti. Ligoti. They're going to take a 30-second timeout, so we are too. We'll be back in just a moment. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. Back to live action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Lagodi Lions do lead 28-16. Brad, I know you've run some sound there at West Washington. They've got it jammed <laughs> here. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm envious. They got it going. Little tag team action there. Yeah. Lagodi throws it in all the way to the backcourt. They're looking for Bledsoe down low. He puts up the shot there. That one gets all the bounces, unable to get it to fall. Eagle and Lagodi's going to come back blocked. up with it. Under a minute now to go here in the first half. And the Jeeps want to end this half like they did the last quarter. They're going to try to, you know, you don't want to hold it too long. You want to try to get a buck and then hopefully stop the Lions again and get it back. Looking to cut into this 12-point lead. Twenty seconds. Jeeps just content. Jeeps to hold seem it. pretty content. Yeah. Yeah. We're under ten here. Lagodi tries to seal it. Nothing there. So there's a three. That one no good. Another three goes up. That one no good. Lagodi able to rebound it. We're going to go into halftime with the Jeeps trailing by 12, 28-16. So we're going to step aside, play a commercial or two, have the commissioner's corner, and then we will be back here for halftime stats. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 
9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family-owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today, 812-883-4154. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control, and priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping, because when you talk, they hear you. It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bob Lovell. This is our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. We talk about all things related to the IHSAA and Commissioner, we are in the middle of it, quite frankly. We are doing what are all those things we do at this particular time of year and it is a fun, fun thing to be involved in it because it's championship time and uh, I know we're talking about uh, boys regionals but this weekend girls gymnastics, they're fighting it out for a championship uh, up at uh, Ball State University at Worthen Arena. What an exciting time for those ladies. You know, often, oftentimes the mainstream is uh, we don't uh, – gymnastics is not out there on the front page of the paper like some other sports are, but it's their day. Uh, and this week is where their season is going to come to a culmination to a state championship at Worthen Arena. And, and uh, you know, it's like anything else we've talked before, Coach. We've got some incredible gymnasts in this state, kids that have dedicated their life to the sport. They're going to compete as a team and individuals, and then they're going to uh, – we're going to crown a state champion at the end of the day on Saturday. So really looking forward to that event. Well, it's been a tremendous uh, championship year to date. We talked last week about uh, two national records set in swimming. Uh, <laughs> talking about great things going on. Uh, Monday night, sectionals were wrapped up around the state due to the inclement weather. We had buzzer beaters. We had great games. And now the field is set for Saturday's regionals around the state. We've got our one-game regionals coming up this weekend. So teams have, uh, you know, as they, they've got through that tough section a week, and now they just need to get their team ready to play one game. We've got some, once again, great matchup. There's a lot of eyes are going to be on that Cathedral Ben Davis game at Southport. Mm -hmm. That's just not – that's, that's a big one, but there's going to be a lot of other games it, throughout the state right. that are incredibly competitive. So, and I've asked you this question, but as we get into the regional round, the, the reaction seemed to be positive on the new format uh, from the girls' tournament. It seemed to have positive thoughts uh, around the state, and uh, it, certainly the, uh, the intensity of play was always there, and I think you're expecting the same thing on Saturday. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Coach. We saw some uh, we saw some things that we, you know, we, we as the old educators go, we had a hypothesis of what that tournament was going to look like as we advanced <laughs> it in a different way. And I think 
what we got was what we expected. We expected to have more engagement across the state, uh, which we saw. Uh, and at the end of the day, and there's a lot of reasons for this, but we had the largest girls attendance in the state championship weekend that we've had since 2009. And, you know, within a, in a day where, you know, we're always looking to increase the number of eyes on what we do. Right. Uh, we had huge attendance numbers for the girls championship. And very rarely do we open up the balcony at uh, the home of the Pacers, Gamebridge Fieldhouse. And this year we did. And uh, that was really uh, fun to do. Glad we could do it. And uh, I think uh, this is shaping up like the girls' tournament to be an incredible weekend. But we'll continue to study it and and make sure it was the right way to go. But early returns, uh, certainly we believe that we've made the right change for the tournament to really help the enthusiasm of it. As crazy as it sounds, we're going to be opening up for baseball and softball practice and track and field. <laughs> we probably we already are, but we're going to be competing in those uh, sports very, very soon. Absolutely, Coach. I've said, I'm uh, in Lowell, Indiana today talking to you, and I was talking to the athletic secretary as I came in the, uh, the office this morning. They were counting money box. And I said, what, are you, what, what did you have last night? <laughs> They've already, the track meets have started. They had an indoor track meet last night. And uh, so the, the track and field athletes are out there right now uh, competing already. So, again, it's on. Springtime is right around the corner. We're just waiting for those trees to bud out and, and get a little warmer weather. But uh, we're ready to celebrate some spring, spring state championships um, in the coming months. Paul Neidig, the commissioner of the IHSAA. This is our weekly conversation about all things IHSAA-related. Commissioner, it's always great to spend time with you. I know you and your staff are going to be out checking out some basketball. Be safe. I'll look forward to our conversation next week. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you for doing what you do, and we'll see. talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Back to live action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Lagodi Lions do lead the Northeast Dubois Jeeps 28 to 16. Um, really been a, a, a battle for the Jeeps to be able to get shots to fall. They just, they've, they've played a, a really good half of basketball. Their shots just aren't falling for them. Yeah, Craig, you see him out there a little early getting some extra shots up. That was some, you know, not being able to hit some shots, especially some wide open ones. And then the inability to kind of rebound uh, was the difference in this first half. Right. I've got um, Ligoti with 13 rebounds and Northeast Dubois with only seven. But it, when it, when you look at it, it really comes down to shooting percentage. They are um, Lagodi has hit six free throws, only attempted six. They're shooting 50% from the floor and 33% from the three-point line at two for six. Where Northeast Dubois is shooting 50% from the floor, but they're only one of seven from the three-point line. So that's the, the difference in the game. You know, everything else is, is pretty even. We've got five turnovers to four. Um, you know, a, a, a pretty balanced attack there for the Northeast Dubois. Peyton Betts, number 22, has four points. Uh, Lockard has one. Gage Shippers has two. Uh, Grant Gallier has four. And then Noah Betts has five. We're on the other side for Lagodi. It's been uh, the Peyton Bledsoe show. He's got 14. Parker Arvin has four. Isaac Wagner with two. Leighton Jeffers with five. And Isaac Eagle with three to give them their 28 as we get ready to start this third quarter of basketball here um you know brad what do you think has to change for northeast dubois to get um you know going here well you brought up uh the points you know the the best player arguably on the floor has to be stopped and that's what dubois has got to figure out a way to stop Bledsoe. but they've also got to find a way to get their own offense going they had a couple little spurts of it but they weren't consistent enough through either quarter. So it'll be interesting interesting to see here after some halftime adjustments of what they did 
because there were some timeouts they called, but they made some adjustments and made a good run. So let's see what happens here in the second half. You're exactly right. The Lions are going to get the ball to start this second half of play. The Lions inbound the ball. Two boys comes out with their original starting five. Going to go in a man-to-man. -man. Bledsoe quick with the dump off to Arvin. Arvin gets it blocked from behind, but going to get a foul called. It looked like Colby Lockard on that foul. Yeah, I believe that's who they're going to get here. Well, Grant Goller going to give him his Sorry first about that. personal. Arvin steps up, knocks that one down for his fifth point. And Lions right now just doing little things, and that just keeps that lead growing and growing. Arvin knocks down the second one. They are 100% from the free throw line. <laughs> and they're giving that same defensive look there, Craig, just not letting them, putting that little pressure, not letting them get it up without a little contention. Right, and then they drop back into this 2-3 zone, which makes it very difficult to get anything going. Dubois working it around the perimeter, looking for somebody at the free throw line. Still looking. They cut three people through, unable to get anybody. Now they're going to work it around to the other side. Trying to overload one and, side of this 2-3 zone. And this is almost as good because, look, they can't get a shot, and there's a lot of time coming off the clock before they're even, even able to get a possession. Yeah, then they turn it over, their first of this half. Three-pointer up, no good. So Jeep's yeah, going to quick shot. I was kind of surprised by that. Yeah. Well, they've got the this way that Ligoti has worked lead. the ball around. Yeah, they've got yeah. this 14 point lead going, so. Come back the other way. Right off of Pey Peyton Bledsoe's face, then Arvin blocks it, so. Gonna be a turnover there coming back. Their second of this half. Bledsoe trails the play after getting hit in, hit in the face. He's taking some shots today. Yeah. Steps into that one. That's no good. Dubois with the rebound. Dubois has to capitalize on these misses by the Lions. Nice move there. Unable to knock it down, though. Both teams coming out a little ice cold, Craig. Yeah. Find Arvin down on the post. A couple of power dribbles up. That one hits rim, but no good. And then we're going to get a foul, so... Not quite sure who they're going to get this one on. I believe it's 22. 23. Drew Walker Drew, is first. Yep. Neither team able to get anything going offensively here. I'd like to see the Jeeps just speed up just a little bit, try to make some cuts here through that zone and see if they can get something low. Jeeps now go four out on the perimeter. Overload that side. Three goes up. That one no good. Lagodi with the rebound. They find Arvin down low. He goes up and unable to get that one up on the board, but we're going to get a foul on number two. I believe that was number five. It is. That's Shepherds with his third. Arvin steps up to the line, knocks that one down. Gives him seven. He's had all the points here in this half. 
4.58 to go. Steps up for that one, knocks it down too. Still just a little press here to speed them up just a touch, back to the 2-3 zone. Going to be a turnover. Oh, that's... Just, and that just zone is almost giving them it. more trouble. Yeah. That zone is giving uh, the Jeeps more trouble than the press. Now the Jeeps come out in their own press. Nice dump off to Arvin. Arvin gets bodied up underneath. Going to go to the line for two more. That looks like Colby Lockard there with the foul. Oh, going to be Shepard's yep. fifth. They got him for it. Both of them were there, so. Is that his fifth foul, they said? that That's his fourth foul. Oh, fourth foul. Wow. I was like, what? Yeah. Arvin steps up, knocks that one in. For a big guy, he's got a good touch for him. Yeah, he's he's really stroking it here from the free throw line. Shepard out, Noah Betts in. That one good for Arvin also. So Lagodi now has two people in double digits. Peyton Bledsoe with 14 and Arvin with 10. Jeeps just don't have an answer for this zone. There it is. They get And see, I think they can get that, Craig, if they make that second pass a lot quicker. Right, they're, Grant Gallier with that one. That not making that second pass will help him out there. His line's bringing it across court. <laughs> Eagle thought about shooting that one. He did. Changed his mind. Coach was right in his ear letting him know don't shoot that one. So Nice backdoor cut by Bledsoe. Going to be a block. That was a close one. Yeah. Butso steps up to the line, knocks in the first one. I don't want to give the broadcasters jink, but Lagodi as a team has not missed <laughs> one yet. That's what I kept writing down. Yeah. I wrote down, do these guys miss? That is 14 in a row, I believe. Look at the point spread there, Craig, and that's what you see. 14 points, all from free throws. That really helped them in the first half, and that's been yeah. a big part of their offense here in the second half. Nice backdoor cut there by uh, That's Colby, Colby Lockard. Lockard. Be I a, wish that you, we could see the Jeeps finish on their end because, Craig, they've had so many good looks. I don't know how many times we've seen them go and they've just not been able to finish right inside there. Right. Oh, they originally gave it to Drew Walker. Nope, they're going to leave it with Drew Walker. Going to shoot two. First one up, no good. Number three checks into the game, Maddox Schnell. The 5'9 junior. That one up and good. So Dubois in their own press here. Drops it off. Arvin up, no good. Gets his own rebound up and knocks that one in. I think you see why Dubois doesn't go to that because they, you know, you see Lane yeah, uh, they, Lagodi just driving through it. Yeah, they, they get beat down the floor and then are able to knock it in, so. Almost a turnover there for the Jeeps. It goes off of about four Jeeps and two Lions and finally out of bounds. Uh, you know, Craig, we do a lot of football games together. That was kind of reminiscent of a, a fumble just on the yeah. ground, just <laughs> getting knocked around just by a team. Nobody could get their hands on it and be able to grab a hold of it. So, Bledsoe 
Ball comes into the backcourt. Jeep's going to set up their offense. That three up. Going to stay with the Jeeps after that miss. Arvin one, one for ten somebody from, else. One for ten from three-point land, or yeah. they've just not been able to convert there. Yeah, they've missed two in this half, and we're only 14% in the first half, so. Colby Locker goes up strong with that one. Going to pick up a foul underneath. Looks like they're going to give it to Peyton Bledsoe. That's his second. Locker to the line. First one up and good. Bounces all around before it drops through. Gives him three points on the day. Cuts the lead to 18. Second one's up. That one no good. Lagodi comes out with the rebound. Bletso going to work one-on-one -on -one here. Gets to the lane. That one goes up and is good. Brings that lead out to 20. Jeep's trying to get it into the lane. We're going to get a jump ball here. Yeah, I thought Coach Freeman over there was trying to get a timeout, but they're <laughs> going to keep it with the jump ball. Yeah. With something we hadn't seen there, the Jeeps haven't had very many out-of-bounds chances under their own basket because they've right. thrown the ball away today. Going to get a foul underneath on three. That's Camden Haywood, the freshman for the Lions. There's a three missed and then out of bounds. Going to be turnover. And just the ice cold shooting here by the Jeeps is kind of uh, allowed the Lions to keep growing this lead they have. Right, they just can't get anything to fall. There's Haywood, that's no good. And then it's going to stay with the Jeeps after it's poked out of bounds. I'm kind of surprised that we have seen Ligoti on this. Um, when they broke this press, they've just fired up a lot of threes in transition there. Um, right, they just haven't been able to they knock have to in the down. First half. No, it's definitely not a three-point for either team today. It's uh, Most of the money's been made on the uh, free throw line. A 20 point lead here for the Lions. Jeeps are going to have to find some way to break down you know, this 2-3 zone that the Lions are running. They kick to the corner. That shot up for three. That one no good. Haywood out with the rebound. Going to pick up a personal foul there on Grant Gawler. Going to be his second. He is the leading scorer for the Jeeps tonight. And Craig, that's something. That this Jeeps team is very fundamentally sound, and they've played so they, – they, they're fundamentals, but they just have not been able to finish. Right. We're going to have a timeout here by the Jeeps, I believe, or who called this timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout, so we're going to step aside, have a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud 
to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Back to action here at Lagodi, where the Lions do lead by 20, 40 to 20 over the Northeast Dubois Jeeps. Checking in for the Lions there was A.J. Foster, I thought. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Number five. Bletso in the corner for three. Touches all around, but no good. And then Eagle unable to get it, too. So a three-point miss and a two-point miss. Coming back the other way, it's a two-point miss. Nobody can seem to get <laughs> one to go. Arvin misses that one. Nobody. Craig, somebody greased the, the rims during halftime is all I can think of. <laughs> I think they took a trash can lid and put it on the top of it. That one good in the corner hey, by Galler. Go. Only the second three for the Jeeps today. Lagodi back to their offense. Going to stay with the Lions here as it goes out of bounds. Leighton Jeffers checks back in. 18.1 left to go here in the third. Noah Betts also comes back in. Kick it all the way into the backcourt. Going to be a kick. So Lions going to retain possession here. We talked about some big wins on the one at Bloomfield was down by Luther today earlier. Right. That was a matchup that a lot of people see as the shot goes up. Off the mark. So going to get two shots there at the end. Nobody able to knock one down. So we're going to step aside for our uh, pre-fourth quarter break. We'll be back with action here in just a moment. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. Affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control, and priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping, because when you talk, they hear you. Back to action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Lions do lead by 17, and they're going to start with the ball here in the fourth quarter. Northeast Dubois just unable to get buckets to fall. Bledsoe drives in and then kicks back out. Goes around the top to Jeffers, into Arvin, left off to Eagle, Eagle up, and that one good. Going to give him five on the day. Jeeps looking around the perimeter, then drive in, back out to the perimeter, looking for that shot. Nothing there. S swings it back and then turns it over. Eagle able to step in. Looks like he took a good shot there before that yeah. ball flies out of bounds. So that's the fifth turnover for the Jeeps. They swing it over the top. Lagodi able to still run their offense. 
Eagle for three. That one good. He's finally getting hot there. You know, Coach yeah, brought up an eight. He, he was a he was a force in the sectional. Nice step through. That one no good. Bledsoe comes out. The Jeep's just ice cold. Arvin underneath. Reverse layup. That one good. Nice play. Anytime you go up and under like Arvin. that. Okay. Kick to the corner. That three up. It draws nothing. But then we're going to get a foul on the rebound. Second half, the Jeeps are just shooting 18%. First half, they were 36, so. Leighton Jeffers picks up that last foul. Jeeps swinging around the top. Nice move there by number five. Gage Schiffers. Going to swing it down to Arvin down low. Steps through, up and good for two. And there's no answer down low for the Jeeps. No, that's 16 for Arvin, 18 for Bledsoe. Going to be a turnover coming back the other way for the Jeeps before they can even get a shot up. Down low, Arvin up and good again. Jeep's going to have to burn a timeout here. Going to be a full timeout. So we're going to step aside, have a commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment for more fourth quarter action here at Jack Butcher Arena. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877 227 9421. That's 877 227 9421. Or just visit our website. Back to action here at Jack Butcher Arena where the Lions do lead 51 25. If you don't know what March basketball is like in Indiana, you're missing out because, um, you know, we've got a gym full of people here who are, you know, rooting for their team, whether it be the, the Lions of Lagodi or the Jeeps of Northeast Dubois, <clears throat> along with the 1,600 people at home who have tuned in to watch. So, yep. That's, that's I'm really Indiana glad that we've been able to give you. this. Yeah, a lot of great fans in an area that really uh, love basketball, especially here in southern Indiana. Glad we could be with them today. 5-10 left to go here. That's going to be a kick ball, so going to stay with the Jeeps. I mean, it, it just falls down. This game has been the execution by the Jeeps of not being able to execute. They, they've been there. Their game plan's been good. Yeah, and the, their shots just aren't falling. I mean, they're, they're shooting, you know, 14% in the first hey, half. Maybe we should just keep talking like that as the three goes in for the Jeeps. That was Grant Gallier. Gives him 12. Lions still content just to run their same offense they've run all day with cutters coming, coming up the lane. They leave it off for 20. He's able to lay that one in. Jeffers for two. So many guys for this Lions team scoring today. Yeah, you know, and that's what we heard in the pregame interview. There were so many people who could hurt you. You know, Bledsoe averages about 20, but mm. but there's still other people on the team that are going to be able to, to put up buckets for you. You know, Arvin's got 18 tonight. Bledsoe has 18, but then they've got Isaac Eagle with eight and Leighton Jeffers with seven, so... That two no good. That two no good. 
That one no good. Finally, Arvin comes out with the rebound. Eagle up, no good. Back the other way. Drive down the lane, left out. Goes up for a two, that one no good. Finally, number 23 Finally. able to knock that one in, Noah Betts. They go all the way down the court to Arvin, back to Bledsoe, back to Arvin. Gives I tell you 20. what, Arvin and, Arvin and Bledsoe just seem to always know where each other are on the floor. Yeah. You can tell that as they've done that a lot today. Well, both seniors both played a lot of ball together, so going to be another turnover here for the Jeeps. Gives them seven in this half. And these are two teams that are familiar with each other. You know, sometimes playing once or twice a year during the during the uh, regular season. So right. you get here and there's a lot of rivalry and a lot of uh, anticipation. You know, this isn't that early morning regional game. You know, you at 4 o'clock you're a little more woken up, but you got to be ready to play. Brandon Bledsoe checks in. Still looking to move the ball around the perimeter here. Back to Eagle along the side. He drives baseline. Bledsoe up and good. So we've got two Lions with 20. Sheffer up and that one good. Nice bucket by him. He's going to go to the line, try to get his seventh point of the night. Able to knock that one in. Lions find the ball in the center of the floor. And then try to feed back to the center after they dribble up over half court. Those of you tuned in wanting to watch the second game, um, it'll be live around 6.30. There's a, a separate stream for that, so uh, make sure you click onto that one. Lions doing a nice job of just moving the ball around here. We'll have another set of Lions, the Rock Creek Lions, taking on the new Washington Mustangs in that game. And with the new semi-state format, we don't know if, these, if the winner of that game will play in what appears to be Lagoti here. Right. Going to get a foul. And, Craig, am I correct? That draw will be on Sunday, correct? Yeah, that draw is tomorrow. So, foul on 23. That's Noah Betts, his second. Coach Haywood getting a lot of those seniors yeah. out of there. We see Bledsoe check out and Arvin check out, both with 20 points on the day. Two seniors that mean a lot to this program. Walking off for the last time on Jack Butcher Court. Court. So we see we see uh, Coach empty his bench, get a lot of those guys in on the floor. Along with Northeast Dubois, they're going to send in their uh, bench players also. So It's kind of like the sixth inning of a spring training game all of a sudden, Craig. There we got go. a lot of people coming in. There you go. Two minutes we'll left to go here in the game. Lagodi out ahead, 57-33. We see the Lions running the same offense that the first guys out there were running, so not going to go away from it. Still a lot of motion here for the Lions. Running a lot of clock. Going to be a turnover. I've got that as their first for this half. 
And that appears that's going to be on A.J. Foster there, the foul. I believe that's who they're going to call it on. Yep, that's who they give it to. Only their sixth team foul of this half. Gallier to the line. He misses the first. Gallier, the 6'1 junior. Second one up and no good either. Ligoti comes out with the rebound where they've just controlled the boards. Ten in the second half to only six for the Jeeps. We see some of the Lions fans starting to load up and, and walk out of here feeling like they've got this one won, which I would believe they do. Minute to go. Kick in the corner to 21. Isaac Wagner. What's really great about Indiana, Craig? Sometimes I don't, I don't even like talking during broadcast. I just like listening. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like unlike anywhere else. Yeah, you definitely hear the uh, student section here. Maddox Schnell picks up his personal. Going to send number three, Camden Haywood, to the line. No pressure here, Camden. You got to hit both these free throws because the <laughs> lines have been perfect on the day. Yeah. There it was. Oh, there it was. <laughs> First miss of the day for them. 40, 42 seconds left there. Gallier for three. That one no good. Blutzo. You know, in regionals, that's you have to hit your free throws. You, you may have to play, you know, mistake-free ball, and that's what the Lions have done here today. The Lions going to win this one here, 57-33. Great job by the Lions coming out, running their offense, doing you know what they've done all season long. So we are going to leave the cameras running while they do the um, awards presentation. We're going to leave a mic on so you can hear it, uh, but we're going to go ahead and step aside. The Lions play a great game here. Overall, you know, good job by them. They're going to advance to the semi-state, which um, the draw will be tomorrow. We'll find out where they play and who they play. So great job by the Northeast Dubois Jeeps and the Logoti Lions. Brad, give you one last shot here. Hey, we talked about a great team. I thought uh, the Jeeps might be able to keep this a little closer with their uh, senior-laden team. But, you know, great teams kind of rise above, and that's what the Lions did here today. And they punched their ticket to a semi-state location that has not yet been determined. We do know that the Indianapolis Lutheran will be there too, so as one of those. So uh, they're the second team that's punched their ticket to some of state. So like we said earlier, we will be back with another um, stream here about 6.30. So, you know, about an hour and 30 minutes from now, second game will be up and going. Um, but we're going to turn our audio to the public address announcer, and we will uh, be ready for the next stream here in a little bit. <laughs> 